All right, if you're not a papyrus paper user, then this may not uh, be a video that you care too much about, but it is testing time. I'm gonna go after this. So there has been some chatter online and you may be familiar if you are a user of this. If you use Thinfire, that's you know a bullseye product. That's, that's um, great stuff. But I happen to have always enjoyed papyrus because it's a little bit thicker. And while it's not advertised as such, you can usually get multiple firings out of it, particularly if you do things that are uh, uh, transparent in nature. Opal glass tends to stick to kiln paper a little bit more frequently, um, even, even this stuff. But uh, you can usually carefully, if you're using um, transparent glass, lift off of papyrus, leave it on your kiln shelf, and refire it and use it several times, actually. In my case, you know, easily three or four if I'm careful, uh, you know, maybe even a little bit more. So uh, then COVID happened and materials became difficult to find and papyrus was very hard to find for a long time. And then finally, about a month ago, a little bit longer than that, it's uh, made its way back onto the market. And so many of us have been buying the new stuff. And I call it the new stuff because there's some chatter online that it's a different formula and that it works a little differently. So I'm gonna reach out to Technoglass myself and ask the question, but somebody had uh, shared that they had done that and they were told that they could not get the exact same materials that they used. And so the formula is a little bit different. And as a result, you're not quite getting the same firing results out of this paper. So it's testing time. I'm gonna have some fun testing it. I This is an older roll. This is a pre-COVID uh, uh, formula, if you will, that I've had and I bought this is where I'm a little disappointed. I bought a massive, you know, studio roll, the biggest that they make, it was over $800, um, which is a significant investment. And uh, and now I'm finding, or I'm hearing, it doesn't fire quite the same. So I'm gonna test it myself and see what happens. So um, I have cut from the old and from the new, I've marked my paper. And honestly, I, I looking at it now if this were all tossed in a drawer together i probably wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference but looking feeling it i can't tell any difference but looking at it and i don't know that you're going to see this on camera but this one seems a little thicker a little harder uh or, you know solid and in this case i can see a little bit of of variation in the color um it just seems a little thinner to me as a matter of fact i have a light board Let's see what we see on the light board, if we can tell any difference there. Oh yeah, check that out, completely different. So um, look at this, the, the old one looks very thick, it looks uh, a little bit more yellowy once you put light under it, and the new one um, doesn't. I mean, it looks very different. So uh, again, if I just had these scraps tossed into a, into a um, drawer, I may not be able to tell immediately the difference based on the feel, but the look is slightly different. Um, so there you go. That's uh, first thing to check out. So I'm going to go and put these on the kiln shelf and then I'm going to show you my layup. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire these at a full fuse. For, my, for me and my kiln, I do about 1475 for 10 minutes. It gives me a nice full fuse. So I'm going to run a full fuse with a variety of different pieces of scrap glass. I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, here's my layup. I've done four different pieces here in the old and new so old and this is all uh opaque glass so i've got some white uh and this is all just three millimeter this is all bullseye glass i think this might even be tecta white tecta um i just raided my scrap pile guys <laughs> I, didn't want to, I didn't want to use really good glass and good cuts um this was something that this is a french vanilla that's on the bottom there's a little bitty layer of french vanilla with clear on top but i wanted the french vanilla down i've got just a strip of you know kind of dark uh, opal um i don't even know what kind of color blend that is and then this is some gray kind of a steel gray i don't even remember what color that is and so same thing over here on the new glass so just white uh tecta same colors same glass same colors side by side i think these are a little bit different i think this one's black and this one's like a deep opal uh purpley something, I don't know, but they're virtually the same. And then on the transparents, so old, I did some two layers of turquoise, 
and this is a Tecta, and then this is a Striker. It's Coral Striker. So same on both pieces here. And again, I'm going to take this up to a full fuse at 1475. Uh, for 10 minutes. I don't even know that I'll worry about a bubble squeeze. Maybe I will. Yeah, I'm going to run a traditional schedule like I normally do uh, for a real real world test here. I'll let it get all cooled all the way down to room temperature again when I open it up, and then we'll see how the paper's fired and how this glass lifts up off the paper. And then my intention is to um, put the glass back on the exact same paper and fire it again and fire it again and fire it again. And we're just going to kind of keep doing this. You're welcome, by the way. All these... <laughs> Uh, all this glass and, and kiln firings just for you, but uh, we're going to do it over and over and over again, see how many I can get out of it and uh, what, it, what it looks like. So uh, let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, here we are, first look out of opening up the kiln. And remember the old uh, paper was off here to the left and the new paper on the right. And as I look at it, I mean, this old paper wrinkled up a little pulled in a little bit there where the glass was pulling in but um the surface i don't know this may not come across in the video very well surface looks really kind of flawless whereas on the new paper see how it's kind of fuzzy see how it looks like it's kind of degraded versus this one maybe a little bit of that effect here but uh Quite a bit more here so i'm not gonna be able to hold the camera and do this at the same time so i'm going to now take the glass off um, and we'll see how much of it sticks in the old and the new particularly on the opal i'm expecting this is going to pull up uh, i'm not expecting me to to be even on the old i just think that particularly like that big strip of white i don't think that's going to release very well uh, i would imagine the transparency will release well so Anyway, I'm going to pull them off. I'm going to keep them kind of separated into their batches here, clean them up, inspect them, and then we'll reload the kiln on what paper is left and do another firing. Okay, on the opal glass, very interesting results. Now, I had butter fingers and I dropped the glass and kind of wrecked this, so that is on me. However, the white was peeling up as I, as I lifted it, um, but then I slipped and dropped it and kind of uh, scooched it, and so most of that damage is on me but but to be fair the white was lifting up you can very clearly see where it was coming off there interestingly here on the new um it all stayed intact now i was super careful but i expected there to be more you know kind of natural lift off you can kind of see where the white was so now let's go check the glass itself old versus new so there you can see where the the paper stuck um it may have it may have released if I didn't drop it. I don't. I don't know, but because it, it did over, over on this side, um, the uh, French vanilla came right off. And then this is that gray. Let's see. There's quite a shine. This is the gray, and then this is the kind of darker, uh, purpley, dark, almost black. And so here, on that black, it picked up a little bit more paper. So on this one, there's a little more paper than on this one. This one actually released surprisingly clear. On the gray, there's how much paper on the old versus the amount on the new. It looks like there's a little bit more stuck to the to the new, but um, you know, fairly comparable. Same on the French vanilla that lifted right off, and then the white. Um, there is some. Let's see, there you go. You can kind of see there's some on there, but not not huge chunks. So it did lift off, but if I'm honest and kind of studying this, it might be hard to see on camera, but like, I, I think that there might be almost kind of holes there, um, you know, getting close to the kiln shelf. So you could definitely see a lot of texture on there. Um, and, you know, just kind of texture across this, whereas what I didn't mess up here on the old one is still pretty smooth. You lose some there. Okay, so let me do the clear now and see, or transparent, and see what happens. All right, so on the transparent, you can really tell the difference now. This old sheet, they picked up perfectly, and honestly, this looks like it was never used. This is the papyrus that I know and love. <laughs> this one, look how fuzzy and... I, 
technically you could fire something else on here, but um, I think you're gonna I think you're gonna be disappointed. Let's we'll test it and see. Here's the glass itself. So here's the transparent picked up from the old. I'm trying to avoid the glare. I mean, there's just a little bit of um, residue on there, but barely. But then look here at the the new. Look how much is on that blue compared to this blue. The coral, sorry about the glare. You know, look at that coral, the difference there, how much of that paper that picked up. And even the clear, which is probably gonna be hard to see, picked up a fair amount of that paper. As a matter of fact, when I was picking them up off of the paper, that paper really wanted to stick to the clear. Um, I had to take my super time and kind of use gravity and try to push the paper back down to the shelf to get it to keep from lifting off with the glass. So um, definite differences here. Let's, uh, I'm gonna clean all this up, decide my approach for this next firing and I'll show you the layup. All right, so I pretty much cleaned up the transparents and put them right back on here. I flipped them upside down and I did that for two reasons. One, I just wanna see if there's any, um, I don't know, extra chance of devitrification on a second firing after you flip it. Uh, and and that's because, and the second reason I did it is because I tend to do this. Sometimes you've seen it in my videos. I'll fire a piece upside down and then I'll flip it and refire it. And so that's a real world example that I wanted to go ahead and try to mimic here. So all three of these pieces were cleaned well, same cleaner, and then these three pieces, same thing, put back on just kind of willy nilly, and there you go, we'll see how those go. I wanted to take a different approach with the opals because we all know that opals you know, tend to stick to glass. So I got out a piece of transparent, um, a fresh piece of three millimeter transparent, and I put it down on the old paper and on the new paper. And then I just put some of the scrap that I had fired the first time on there, you know, for volume. And uh, then, I, so that's a transparent now on reused, and then on reused that had been opal first. And then here's a piece of opal. This is that same um, steel gray, I think it was 236. Anyway, so I just cut another scrap of that and piled some things on. I went ahead in my scrap bin and got a couple of other random pieces out just for, for volume mostly. This uh, dark piece I kept exactly the same. I just flipped it and uh, and put it. I in fact, everything that had been pre-fired once, I've flipped. So they're all, they're all now face down. Uh, same here. So on the new piece, we've got transparent and opal base. I'm very interested to see the undersides of these once they fire. So, uh, you know, I put some of the initial pieces on there and then a couple of other scraps from my bin just for, for volume. And we're gonna see how these fire. So we've got old here and new here, and I'm gonna do the exact same fire schedule, run this thing and see what it looks like when it's fully cooled. Oh, for those who are interested, um, you know, there's some debate about when you lift glass off the paper, it needs to be at room temperature or as cool as possible. If it's hotter, sometimes it tends to stick more. So for those who are interested, the room temperature here in my Texas basement right now, or excuse me, Texas garage is uh, 86 degrees. And so that's what the kiln was uh, and everything felt fully cool to the touch. It had, it had plenty of time with the lid open to, to cool. So it was fully cooled. And uh, I think you see that because in most cases it lifted off the paper cleanly, except where I had the oops there. So let's fire it and see what happens. All right, so here we go after the second firing. Now, I only took this up to 1465, so it wasn't like a full, full fuse in my kiln. Um, 1475 for 15 minutes or so might have been a better hold if I really wanted everything to smooth out, but I think I'm going to get the, um, you know, the. we're going to learn something no matter what. So again, in the old version, here is the transparent and uh, the opaque, and then here in the new opaque, and transparent. So uh, just glancing some interesting results, I got devitrification on the blue. So you can see how it has that like matte finish on both. So <clears throat> it seems like that, you know, blue was susceptible to that no matter what. So in this case, it didn't matter whether it was the old or the new. I don't see that on the clear or on the uh, coral on either one. So just the blue. And then here, um, maybe just a bit on the white, but that's not unusual. White white does that all the time. The, um, looks like the piece of French vanilla that was facing up 
is devitrified in both cases. This black is not quite as shiny as it could be. Yeah, the white has some devitrification as well. <clears throat> but uh, consistent across the bo both of them, I would say there's not anything inconsistent. So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to try to lift them up and we'll see how that goes. All right, so once again, this is the transparents that were on the old, and this is the set of transparents that were on the new. And um, similar to the first time, there's a little residue on the old paper, but not a ton. There's more on the new paper. So we lost more of the material onto the glass versus the old one. These lifted right off of that old paper, these, that paper was stubborn, didn't want to get up, give up. I had some peel up with the uh, coral here that I had to put back down, uh, kind of touch it with my finger and get it to peel off and pull off of there. So let me show you what they actually look like in the kiln. The, there's the old, there's the new. So this is where the coral held on and it wanted to pull up, but just not sure. See, look how much texture and degradation basically there is on this second firing and then here's the original there's a little bit of fuzziness there um, but barely honestly still looks amazing so definitely a difference after the second firing um, let me clean up this glass and see what it looks like once it's cleaned up all right, and after cleaning them up, um, they look fine. I mean, they the bottoms look fine. There's texture on them like you typically get with papyrus. Um, there had been a report online about somebody saying that fiber was getting embedded into their finished piece after they fired it a second time. I'm not seeing that, at least not in these examples here. So um, I think after you pull them out of the kiln, they're fairly comparable, actually. So that's good news. Um, let me now take a look at the opals. Well, pretty comparable. So I had a lot of paper lift up on both the old and the new. So as it relates to these two, um, you know, they both had pretty much the same effect. Over here, here's the, well, remember I put a piece of transparent down first on this one in particular, but even that picked up a little bit of the paper picked up more there and then the whole back side of this uh, steel gray or camera what it's called is uh, had gotten picked up and then here the clear picked up more paper but you know still pretty much the same result and then again the gray picked up almost all of it so um, this is not new I mean if you and now to be fair it was really warm in the garage and this glass is still kind of warm so I could have let it uh, cool a little bit more. I was probably being impatient, but the reality is if you fire opals on any kiln paper, you know it's very hard to uh, maintain that past one one firing, and that's the experience here. So I'm going to get these cleaned up, and we'll take a look at them. Okay, it is hot. So I have the garage door open, I have the fan going, and now the dog has started to bark. So sorry about that in the background. Okay, I got these cleaned up, and so here is the stuff that was fired on the old. Here's the two pieces that were fired on the new. So um, fairly, fairly the same, I think, between the two. It's interesting, you can kind of see the previous firings. You can see indentations. Now this is on the old stuff. This is the original stock, but you can see where the strips had been that had fired, just a slight discoloration there. Um, so, and that's the case with reusing paper all the time. It doesn't matter what brand or what lot of paper, you know, you're going to see a little degradation in the paper. And so therefore the glass picks that up perhaps. I mean, as you know, glass picks up everything, everything on the new, um, this looks like a stylized penguin. I feel like I should add an eye and little orange feet. <laughs> um, but that clear piece looks fine. And then here's the, uh, the gray. Again, you can note that you can kind of see the swoop of where that, uh, clear piece had been fired on there before. Um, because that new paper didn't hold up quite as well, I think there's more texture. So you can see these like kind of pock marks, almost like pimples on here. Um, there's just more of that than there is on the one that was fired on the new paper. So a little bit smoother, a little bit more. Did I say new? This is the new, this is the old. You can see more of this on the new than you can on the old. Um, 
so if the back of the piece means that much to you and it really matters like that then just take that into account but again it doesn't matter whether it was old paper or new paper you know you run a risk when you're reusing paper because you can see that those images on there interestingly i don't think i see those as much over here on the new one um but that's what happens when you're reusing paper so now i just took the paper out of the kiln uh, there's no point in trying to refire again it was it was decimated um, so i'm gonna stop there with these guys but i am gonna go ahead and fire the clear again and continue to use that same the transparent and i'm gonna keep using that same paper so going in for another firing this time hotter because i have some projects that are going in hotter so these last two firings have gone to 1465 for 10 minutes i'm gonna crank that up probably 1480 for 10 or 15 minutes, probably 15. So uh, we'll see what happens to that transparent after that next firing. All right, just a little bonus. I decided rather than just throwing this into the scrap bin, why don't I go ahead and make some sort of puddle melt out of it? So I took all of those pieces that came from the experiments that were opalescent and I stacked it on the bottom, cut it, nipped it, stacked it, stacked it. So it's really tall, it's gonna spread out. It might even spread out past my paper, uh, but I thought that this would be fun. So I'll put this in with the full fuse. It's gonna devitrify, it's gonna look like hell, but uh, you know, why not, let's play. All right, here they are after firing number three. This time I went to a higher temperature. I went to 1485 and I held for 15 minutes because I had something else in the kiln that needed that temp. So I'm going to pick them off and see what happens. You know, the paper looks about the same. This is the old one, this is the new one, as has been the case for the whole video. Uh, but let's see how they lift off. All right, and here they are, uh, consistent with the other two firings. They lifted off the um, ones off the old, lifted uh, just, uh, very very well a little bit stickier on the new paper particularly on this clear the blue and the and the uh, uh, coral lifted off fairly easily that clear still tends to be a little sticky and um, here's the condition of the paper so a little bit of a wrinkle there that's probably just me um, and then you know this one continues to degrade but it's still there so on this one gosh I feel like on the old one I could still get three more firings we'll see I guess I'm going to keep testing, guys. Uh, and then on this one, you know, it's definitely showing its age, but technically um, I'm going to try it again, and I think you could. I'm going to clean up the pieces over here and uh, see how they clean up. All right, and here they are cleaned up. You know, I really don't tell much of a difference between them, to be honest. Um, they, they both clean up well. I've held them up to the glass or to the light. I don't see any embedded fibers as had been rumored or what somebody else was complaining about. Um, you know, as samples here, they look generally the same. So after three firings on clear, I can say at this point, they seem to be performing at about parity in terms of the end result. Um, clearly, the paper looks different. And I still believe that this one's going to last longer than this one. Uh, than the new one, but so far, while I'm still frustrated that the formula changed and that wasn't shared, um, the results mm, seem to be pretty close to, to the same. I'm going to fire it again. Okay, here's my little bonus project. So big kind of slab that came out. It's got a little devitrification that's forming on it that's fully expected and understandable. Uh, I am going to uh, chop this up. I'm going to just use some uh, some nippers and some brute strength and uh, chop this up into smaller pieces, stack them on their ends and do puddles with it. And then I think, I don't think I'm gonna turn them into jewelry. I think I'm gonna use them in molds like my paw print mold that I love uh, and make more paw prints with it. So um, I don't know that I'm gonna go through the process of showing all that to you. You don't need to know that, but uh, that's what I'm gonna end up doing with this slab of glass if you're interested. All right, here it is after the next firing. Um, interestingly, I had a piece of French vanilla, uh, something that I fired over here and the paper came up with it. Uh, I also fired a whole bunch of those puddles that I just cut up and you know, there is some black and some gray. So there's some opal that was in those uh, and I had a hard time getting some of those up as well. So in many cases, this is feeling like one time glass, although, you know, French vanilla is kind of an opal. Um, or I mean, one, one time paper, not glass. Um, but anyway, this is now the fourth firing. So um, now my now my uh, 
uh, coral is starting to get some devitrification. I got a really nice uh, layer of that going on on the blue here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to peel these off and see how they do. And once again, fairly consistent, um, you know, more paper continues to be picked up on the new paper versus the old, but generally I was able to pick them up and the paper remains. The, uh, the new continues to degrade. The old one still looks pretty decent. So I don't know, I guess I can continue to fire these, but this is the fourth firing. So I think that the point has been made that technically, if you're very careful, that you may be able to get similar results out of both of these, but you do have to be pretty careful. So in the end, if you're considering kiln paper, you just have to uh, think through a couple of things. First, what's the company reputation? What's their customer service known for? I'll be honest, I reached out to Techniglass uh, when I knew that I was doing this video. I sent them an email. I got a fairly prompt response asking for my telephone number and that somebody from the technical team wanted to call me and discuss this with me. I gave them my availability two different times with my telephone number, never heard from them. I reached out two more times during the week and I asked them for a written statement so that I could include that in here. I also asked them for details like lot numbers for the old runs so that if you did find some papyrus, you could check and see if it was the old version or the new. Um, again, multiple attempts and nobody ever responded to me. I never got emails back, nobody ever called. So that's a little disappointing to be honest. What are your firing results you're looking for? So I've heard a lot of folks talk about thin fire, gives you maybe a little bit of a smoother backing to the glass, that papyrus leaves a little bit more texture. So that's something for you to consider. From a price standpoint, what are the costs of both? Uh, you know, what is the what is the retail value? I find papyrus to actually be a little bit cheaper from a retail standpoint, but if you can buy wholesale, if you're buying significant quantities and can get a discount from Bullseye, then that's something to consider as well. But then also part of that is what's the reuse of it? So if you can get four firings out of a piece or more, um, you've got to factor that into the, into the costs as well. And then finally, what's the cleanup like? Um, for, for every time I've used thin fire, I only get a single use out of it, and that stuff just disintegrates. It's it like turns to powder to to flour almost like baking flour. And it's, it's very difficult, in my opinion, to clean up. I do appreciate the fact that Papyrus, even the new version, holds up a little bit better. It makes cleanup a little bit easier. I always wear a mask, of course, but I do appreciate the fact that the cleanup is just a little bit easier on Papyrus. So am I going to stay a Papyrus customer? I mean, at this point, I've bought such a huge roll, I, I can't help, you know, but use it up. Um, I do hope the formula comes back. I do hope the company reconsiders their approach here and, and thinks a little differently about how they treat the fusers. Because in the end, I mean, I appreciate wanting to get product back onto the market uh, because I know that they have been out of stock for quite a while. Uh, I do I do appreciate that and, and trying to save jobs and, and bring income in. Uh, but, you know, as fusers, many of us are... are um, <laughs> subject to very high costs and expenses related to this hobby. And so I think a little bit more transparency about, um, you know, the, the change would have been better. Personally, I would have bought a much smaller piece to, to try and to sample had I known that it was being made different than buying the giant roll. So uh, I suppose I might still hear from Technoglass, particularly after this hits uh, YouTube. So uh, I have video notes under the um, under the video here. If I, if I do hear back from them with anything, I'll, I'll go ahead and drop it into the video notes. Hey, thanks everybody. If you don't already follow me on Facebook, you might go check that out because we've got a, a group over there and there may be some conversation that happens. Uh, you can share your experiences. Hope everybody is having a great one. Test, test, test and learn and, uh, you know, get out there and have fun. Catch you later. Bye-bye.